Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the sixth annual Clinical Trials Patient Experience Summit. It's good to see everyone here and engaging in the chat for the event. Uh, I'd like to first quickly thank Bristol Myers Squibb for their support in helping Panagora Pharma, our organization, pull this event together. It's been about six months um, in, in progress to pull this together, and we have people from 20 different countries dialing in. I'd like to quickly acknowledge them from Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Switzerland, Cyprus, Germany, Spain, France, Great Britain, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Peru, Poland, Portugal, Sweden, and the United States. So thank you all for dialing in uh, across all time zones to, to be a part of this event. We have a great agenda scheduled for today, talking about uh, how clinical trials can improve the patient experience uh, and interfacing with life science companies. So as patients, as advocates, as technology organizations, how we can all together to really improve the patient experience in clinical trials and improve the amount of people that are aware and enroll in clinical trial opportunities, not just in life or death situations, um, but really across all therapy areas. So uh, thank you once again to Bristol Myers Squibb. Thank you to our sponsor, Medible, for being a part of this event and supporting us. Uh, just some details on the platform, so some of the functionality here. So on the right side, you'll see where you can enter chat um, and enter questions that we will be addressing throughout the event for each session. Uh, there'll also be the opportunity for you to connect with people um, throughout the event um, via the networking function. You can also click into the people tab and you can look into um, you know, the opportunity to connect and send direct messages to people. So uh, please be sure to use all the functionality that we have here um, take a look at our sponsor, Medible. Uh, if there's people monitoring the chat from Bristol Myers Squibb, if you have any specific questions about their organization, uh, feel free to do that. But we have uh, about 170 uh, attendees uh, just from patient advocate perspective. We're expecting near 300 in total today. So um, it should be a great event and make sure that you can uh, use all the functionality that we have. Uh, thank you once again. And I'd like to go ahead and introduce uh, Kate Owen, uh, a brief, little brief background here on Kate. Uh, Kate is the head of global development operations within Bristol Myers Squibb. In this role, she leads and manages all operations related to the conduct of Bristol Myers Squibb clinical trials, including pharmacology studies as well as phase one through phase four. She's also responsible for the data management and data standards, including the tools, systems, and processes to support efficient clinical trial execution. And Kate was a part of this event last year and when we were in person at the uh, Lawrenceville campus. So I know it's a little different this morning, but um, I really appreciate you being here to, to take some time out of your busy day to, to address this event. And uh, we're looking forward to, to having you here. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll give the stage to you. Thank you very much, Doug. On behalf of Bristol Myers Squibb, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the sixth annual Patient Experience Summit. And it gives us tremendous pride to serve as the host sponsor again this year. Although, of course, it is a little bit different. COVID-19 has changed everything for us. And before I go much further, I think I need to apologize. Um, my husband is working at home. I have three children who are all doing remote learning and I have two dogs in an open plan home. And so if you hear noise or even music around me, I do have to apologize as we're all balancing how we come together and how we work and how we explore the family dynamic at this time. That's a little bit about the environment I'm working in, but really what we're here to do today is to further understand the patient and the caregiver environment. And we're very, very happy that you join us today so that we can learn and understand more intently. We have to focus on the most important members of the clinical trial ecosystem, our patients, their caregivers, loved ones, family members, and of course, our clinical trial sites. The subject matter focus of this, of this summit is one that is near and dear to all of our hearts. And it comes at a very important time for BMS. Next week, BMS will celebrate my favorite work week. It's all about celebrating our patients, patient week. 
From the moment you enter a BMS facility, you'll see photographs and caveat stories from our patients from around the world with different diseases. They are active in their way to remind us and to reinforce for us all what we do every day. And you'll see the banner say who we work for, who do we work for? They're a very, very pertinent reminder. And for me purpose, per personally, as I come into the office, if I'm having a bit of a low day, to see one of those photographs and hear and read one of those stories is incredibly impactful and actually forms the, full, the foremost piece of the day for me. They're our fabric of our organization. Patient Week is energizing for us all. We get to hear from our patients, we get to see our patients, their loved ones, and we get to understand and listen to their stories. Similarly, despite the fact that we're doing this summit in a virtual way, I am hoping that this summit is energizing for every member of the, the organization that jo joins us today, for every member of the virtual, virtual forum that we're hosting, and for everyone that can listen in later. It is incredibly important that we take every opportunity to come together in the spirit of improving patient clinical trial experience. And that's where the summit brings its energy. It brings together sponsors, CROs, vendors, clinical trial site staff, and most importantly, patients. We need to understand, we need to ask open-ended questions, and therefore we need you to be courageous to stand up and explain to us what your ideas are, what your experiences have been, and how that can lead to better practices. I always say a clinical trial patient shows us three characteristics. Care as they consider their, their future options, and they take care in making those decisions with their families. They take courage. Many people, when faced with signing an informed consent, will not take that courageous step forward. And in signing consent, many patients believe that they make a significant commitment to that company. We at BMS believe that we make a significant commitment back. And in fact, as we evolve our landscape, deal with COVID-19, is the element of patient courage that we need to take forward as well. We need to understand what it truly means and do everything we can to support that experience being positive. The theme of the summit is increasing patient centricity by creating meaningful contributions for all parts of the clinical or drug development life cycle. That's a bit of a mouthful. But hopefully, as you engage in these summits and you spread the word, people will begin to understand what drug development is all about. We're at a moment in time, I think, for drug development as we watch the news and people talk about clinical trials for COVID-19. But there's so much more to do than just answer a question in a moment in time. And that's what these summits do. They give us longevity. They give us greater understanding and they give us a great opportunity. My hope at the end of this day, even though it's virtual and I know connectivity is incredibly important. I still hope that you leave energized. I hope that you'll share your advice, your perspectives, and your real life experiences that will help us shape future summits as well as how we deal with clinical trial execution each and every day. It's important that we listen. And so from that perspective, I hope that you will give us your time, your attention, and pose questions that you would feel that need answering. I truly hope you enjoy your time with us and with all of the speakers that have been lined up for this interactive, insightful and very much needed summit. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over. And if any of you have any specific questions for me, please feel free to put them in the chat and I'll respond to them as quickly and as openly as I can at that, that time allows. Thanks so much for your attention and let's get going. Thank you so much, Kate. That was fantastic. Uh, so if you have any questions uh, for Kate, please enter them into the chat room, uh, chat function on the right. We'll be sure to address them as they come up.
So in this, so Kate, I, I have a question. Um, go for it, Doug. I was going to ask you if you had something for me. Yeah, I do. I do. So in the year since we uh, we participated in this event together last year, um, are there any poignant um, kind of outcomes that have that have come from that meeting? Things that got raised throughout the event that uh, you've gone back to incorporate throughout the organization. Um, is is there anything that that comes speaks out to mind? I know that you know the uh, the materials had permeated throughout BMS, and there were some initiatives that that did come up throughout uh, throughout the session. So, uh, is there anything that comes to mind in your role? So, I think there are two things. The first was that as we began began this journey, we also realized that we needed more than just ourselves in order to make a significant impact. And quite frankly, BMS, we've been championing within BMS as to what to do, especially around diversity of clinical trial participation. And just recently, BMS has come forward with uh, a health parity. What I would say is I would like to see us on the pathway to parity rather than always talking about healthcare disparity, which tends to be negative. What they're doing is we will be primarily focused in the United States initially doing an evaluation of the demographics as well as the epidemiology of certain diseases to look for clinical trial centers that serve a diverse patient population, which is something that was that you've all raised. As importantly, we need to also help support the development of underrepresented physicians that want to do clinical trials. And so we will be launching a $300 million um, a grant to support up to 250 underrepresented uh, physicians to, to help them through their education. As an outcome of that, as they finish that fellowship type program, where they will give 40% of their time to clinical trial education and support in the local community, we are hopeful that as they secure positions in their in their future career, if they go to a, if they are appointed to a clinic that doesn't do clinical trials, then BMS will um, at a certain level support the infrastructure to help them create a clinical trial site. That is a massive undertaking. Um, it won't solve the issue, but I think it does help us on a pathway to parity. So that is something that we've done as a result of a whole host of people speaking at length with all levels within BMS, including our board, to secure that financial input. Um, in addition, as we've thought about patients and what you need from us, COVID has spurred us in a way. It's made us have to, to implement things a lot faster, such as direct drug to patients at home, telemedicine, being able to visit any clinic, any site that was easy for you to get to as a patient or your caregiver could take you to rather than a clinical trial site and us dealing with the data, dis data disparity at the end of it rather than asking for everybody to go to the same places all at the same time. Taking advantage and offering private uh, transportation for patients. All of those things trying to make it easier for patients to enter clinical trials as well as stay with clinical trials to that end point. Um, I always think it's it's almost a waste of patient love and care if we can't secure the data which will ultimately lead to a filing. And so it, we've looked at all different ways that we can support families and patients in that in that dynamic and the environment we're dealing with right now. And all of those things are becoming embedded into how we do work in the future. So it's not that this is a COVID-19 response, it's COVID-19 gave us the epicenter to really focus in the moment, but that moment will now become the way that we do business moving forward. Does that help, Doug? That does help. I think that really sets the stage for, you know, the roadmap that you're looking to get there. And, you know, we all understand that nothing is perfect, uh, especially these days. Um, it seems that there's landmines everywhere. But, you know, frankly, BMS has taken a leadership position, um, you know, in, in a lot of these initiatives. And it's something that uh, you, you should be recognized for. And I think that 
you know, us partnering with you on a, on such an initiative like this and, and giving back to patients, giving them a platform to interface and interact directly with your organization is really something that, that should be commended. And hopefully more companies, you know, understand from, from your perspective, the, the benefits that can come, you know, partnering and, and listening to patients more throughout the uh, clinical development process to uh, incorporate their insights and experience um, to, to really make the, the, the platform and the engagement a lot less burdensome. There's, there's so many different initiatives from, you know, being a patient, being a caregiver that, you know, we really try to improve communication between all stakeholders throughout that. And uh, that's something that we'll be hearing specifically from the next session. Uh, from uh, from Marla Jan Wexler, but uh, you know we really appreciate your uh, your leadership. And um, are there are there any other questions that we have uh, from the audience um, for for Kate? Can I touch on burden, Doug? Of course. So I will say that one of the key facets as we've listened to patients and healthcare providers and study study nurses around the world is is the the attribute of burden the complexity of clinical trials and as um sites are recovering from covid 19 what they're saying to us is we really want to focus our resources our energies and our patients to those things that are most impactful so bms has taken that to heart as well as the information that you've shared with us previously and we are building um a foundational process that not only asked for input into our protocol design from advocates and, and study sites, but also how can we reduce the burden of those requirements on the sites themselves, on the resources at those sites, as well as on the patients and their caregivers. And so as, as we move forward with the development process and new protocols coming through our organization, we're actually doing an, an analysis on what is being requested by those therapeutic area teams and where does that lead to from a complexity of protocol on the site or on the patient themselves. And they will have to justify um, the, the complexity that they bring forth. Sometimes it's going to be needed. Phase one, first in human or first, uh, first into patient studies are always going to be a little bit more complex and demanding as we look at what is the the blood level or or other L or pharmacodynamics of the drug however as you go through the development cycle we would, we want to reduce the number of exploratory questions we ask and really get into what is the primary objective for that particular study and therefore reduce the time as well as reduce the ask of a patient or a site. So that is also something that we listened to you on. They're never easy things to do. Um, and I always hold a phrase to the therapeutic areas. So would you put your mum in this clinical trial? And if the answer is no, because it's too complicated, then, I, then we try to send them back and simplify things a little bit. But now with this new process, I think we'll get a bit further, a bit quicker, which is always a good thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love the way you put that, uh, especially with a loved one. You know, it's 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 so difficult and life sciences are so siloed that um, things like this that that can really, you know, refresh the humanity of uh, of the nature of participating in a clinical trial are always something that we should be doing on a, on a weekly basis and um, getting everyone throughout your organization to to pitch in on these initiatives, it's a, it's a real systemic and cultural change. Um, you know, patients are becoming more and more empowered um, by the day as, uh, as more is demanded of them for participation. We always have to remind ourselves that at the end of the day, there's a, there's a human being that is dedicating their time and their life to these initiatives to create new therapies to not only help themselves, but help future patients um, to, to, to really drive innovation and, and life science therapies moving forward. So um, I'd like to quickly just say thank you, Kate. Thank you so much for all of your time and your work in this space. Uh, it's a pleasure working with you and your organization. Um, and really, uh, there's just uh, there's kind of one more one more question here. Um, you know, how, how have you managed your experiences during COVID? We have we have two minutes left. So um, I'd like to 
to really focus on that. You know, have you heard any specific patient stories about, you know, getting to a site and, you know, the reservations around that and how is BMS specifically addressing those concerns while also trying to keep timelines moving forward? So BMS made a decision in March when COVID really began to hit that we would only continue to recruit and act, recruit patients and activate sites if we could assure that the, that the patient could be treated in accordance with the protocol and could be treated safely. We also had to take a stand around the safety of our own employees and them traveling to sites. Um, Many companies took different decisions at that time as to how to continue clinical trials, and that was BMS's. So we slowed, in some ways, we had to slow recruitment because sites weren't able to fulfill the requirements and patients didn't feel safe coming into clinical trials. So we have seen, on average, at least a three-month delay to our recruitment timelines. What we've found from taking that stance is that our data that we have received is, is has greater integrity and is more complete, which is meaning we are able to file and close our databases uh, and file the drugs, which is ultimately what we need to do if we're going to get them approved. What we have done along the way, as I've touched on, is we've embodied telemedicine, so a patient can go anywhere they need to or do it from home. Drugs directly from the site to patient home. Um, also allowing them if they want to to go into any clinic that they want to they don't have to go into the clinical trial site um, helping our sites with uh, remote data review so because our, our staff can't get into sites um, and then so simplification of our protocols those are all things that we've done quickly as a sort of crucible moment from covid that we will continue to do as well as providing sites specific help as they need it to recover. PPE, for example, has been supplied, as well as pri privately paying or paying for private um, transportation to sites for patients that have concerns. All of those things are supposed to alleviate the burden on the clinical trial site who might have to be dealing with a large surge of COVID in their community as well as alleviate the burden on the caregiver or the patient that continues to want to join or be sustained in a clinical trial. I think that covers everything that we are working on immediately, but you may have more ideas for us and more points of view that obviously a day like today will elicit. So I'm looking forward to the output. Thank you very much, Doug. Absolutely, thank you so much. Um, and along those lines, if you have any recommendations or you'd like to talk about your experiences uh, with, with a clinical trial during these times, we'd more than welcome uh, your insights and your experience. So, so either chat them into the main session uh, through the main portal page, uh, or if you'd like to attach them to this session, feel free to do so. But um, thank you very much, Kate. We really appreciate your time. Um, and we'll be moving on uh, very shortly to, uh, to Marla Jan Wexler who is uh, the CEO and founder of Luck Fupus. Uh, she's gonna be talking about the importance of improving communication and we're gonna start that session in about one minute. So uh, just stay in the stage link and uh, I'll be ending this session now uh, and we'll be moving on. Thanks. Thanks so much, Doug. Have a wonderful time and good luck everybody. Can't yeah. wait to hear the output and I'll be joining every periodically. Take care. Fantastic.